Welcome to Electron Line, and here we have a very classic example of how we deal with light refraction in Snell's Law. So let's say we have a cube of glass, the index of refraction of 1.6. Looks like the cube is 4 centimeters by 4 centimeters. Outside we have air with an index of refraction equal to 1. Let's say we send the beam into the cube at a point 1 centimeter away from the very edge of the cube. We expect the beam to refract. And the objective is to, to have the beam hit the corner, the very corner at the bottom of the cube right there. And the question then is, what should the angle over here be so that the beam that's refracted into the cube will hit that corner exactly? Well, the way to do that is to kind of work ourselves backwards. What we're going to do is we're going to figure out what the refracted angle is and then use Snell's law to figure out what the incident angle is. Because we know using Snell's law that N1 sine of theta 1 equals n2 times the sine of theta 2. So theta 2 would be the refracted beam, theta 1 would be the incident beam. Since we don't know what the incident beam is, that's what we're looking for, we're going to solve Snell's equation for theta sub 1. So we can say that sine of theta sub 1 is equal to n2 times sine of theta sub 2 divided by n sub 1. Therefore, theta sub 1 is equal to the arc sine of n2 sine of theta 2 divided by n1. And finally, when we plug in the values, we say that theta sub 1 is equal to the arc sine of n2, that would be 1.6, multiplied times sine of theta 2, that would be the sine of, but here we have a little problem. We don't know yet what theta sub 2 is, so we'll leave that blank for now. And of course, n1 would be the index of refraction on the outside, that would be 1. Okay, so what we have to do now is find out what theta sub 2 is. We need to find out this angle right here, theta sub 2. How do we find that? Well, we have some information here. We know that this vertical distance is 4 centimeters, this horizontal distance is 1 centimeters. So what we can do here is we can figure out what this angle is here. So let's call this angle uh, phi. And you can see that these then become altered in interior angles. So phi and theta sub 2 are the same angle. So when we find phi, we find theta sub 2. Using the tangent, we know that the tangent of phi is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. In this case, the opposite side to the angle would be 1 centimeter, and the adjacent side would be 4 centimeters. So that's a 1 to 4 ratio. So if the tangent of phi is equal to 1 divided by 4, that means phi is equal to the arc tangent of 1 divided by 4. And so phi therefore is, and let's get a calculator for that. So 1 divided by 4, take the arc tangent of that, arc tangent, and we get 14.0 degrees. Let's call it 14 degrees. So it's equal to 14 degrees. All right. If phi is 14 degrees, that means the refracted angle theta sub 2 also is 14 degrees. So therefore, we can say that theta sub 2 is also 14 degrees. And that goes in here. So that's the sine of 14 degrees, the sine of theta sub 2. Now we're ready to find theta sub 1. So we take the sine of that, multiply it times 1.6, and we take the arc sine of that. And we get 22.8 degrees. So the incident angle, theta sub 1, must be 22.8 degrees in order for that beam of light, as it enters the cube, to hit the corner of the, of the, of the uh, block of glass right there at the very bottom. And that's how we do that.